Welcome to the final report presentation of Team 9. Our topic of choice is DNA nanotechnology and how it can be used to address current challenges in the biomedical industry. We will begin the presentation by providing the background and motivation for our engineering problem, following which we will define the problem that we are addressing, the proposed solution, and its goal. We will then discuss in more detail the material used and the manufacturing technique employed to generate the solution. Finally, we will discuss the limitations and the next steps for our proposed solution. In our presentation, we will be discussing how DNA nanotechnology can be used to address the issue of inefficient drug delivery within the human body. Traditionally, the drug pills or shots inputted into the body is delivered to the disease molecules through naturally occurring nanomachines within the body. Due to imprecise drug delivery and drug toxicity, the biomedical industry uses a DNA nanotechnology technique called tile-based assembly to create DNA nanostructures that can carry and deliver drugs within the body. This technology has only been tested on animals and have not reached human trials yet. However, our team proposes that using a DNA nanotechnology technique called origami assembly to create the DNA nanostructures would have advantages such as bigger and more controllable structures that are more suitable for this application. Now I'll pass it on to Stephanie to talk about our problem statement. A challenge faced by the healthcare industry is targeted drug delivery. There's currently two delivery systems commercially used. One is a biomimetic natural delivery system and the second is the synthetic delivery system. The issues with the current drug carriers are their side effects, some of which include cytopathic effects, which pertain to producing damages to living cells, mutagenesis, which concerns to possible genetic mutations, the current drug carriers intrinsically have poor solubility, which means it takes a long time to dissolve in the human body. Materials used to make the drug carriers are also often inorganic, leading to toxicity and enzymatic degradation. Additionally, healthcare workers have limited control over the insertion site of drug carriers. With the current advanced manufacturing technique, we are able to utilize nanotechnology to encode DNA and create DNA nanostructures. DNA is a genetic material, which means that it is a biopolymer that is biocompatible and biodegradable with the host body. This, te this technology provides great potential for clinical applications, especially for generating a new form of drug delivery. DNA is unique due to its ability to self-assemble. This allows for engineers to computationally assemble DNA nanostructures with precise architectural control. The assembly of DNA nanostructures determine its functionality. With the potential of generating a desired structure means that we can encode the DNA to address current delivery limitations. The target for the new delivery system is to have the ability of DNA sensing to penetrate drug into the in vivo membrane to target specific cells, minimizing enzymatic degradation and toxicity, and improving solubility. However, we would like to note that we are still unable to perform in vivo testing. Three classes of intercellular assemblies used in DNA nanostructures is the tile-based assembly, origami-based assembly, and nanoparticle templating assembly. And next, Anita will further explain how DNA nanotechnology can be used for drug delivery. DNA nanotechnology is considered a bottom-up technology due to the chemical-based assembly nature of DNA. Before introducing the assembly technique, we are proposing it will be good to understand the advantage of using DNA as a material to build nanostructures. DNA has a widely known geometry that facilitates the control of shape and size of the structures. DNA is formed of four main nucleobases. These have a particular way to bond to each other, being adenine only compatible to thymine and cytosine to guanine. This limited bonding helps to create more predictable and programmable structures. Finally, the hybridization energy between strands is known as well. 
Hybridization is the process of establishing a non-covalent sequence-specific interaction between two or more complementary strands of nucleic acids into a single complex. This effect promotes the DNA self-assembly properties. We wanted to focus our analysis on one assembly technique that has shown to be more successful in the field of drug delivery. DNA origami offers the assembly of programmable structures. Therefore, it is preferred to create highly complex structures as the one used on drug delivery. The figure in this slide shows the process to create a self-assembled DNA box with a controllable lead using the DNA origami technique. Extractors such as this one are fully designed using modeling software packages and tested by using advanced microscopy techniques. Additionally, the assembly technique is much simpler and consists of a single reaction of short oligonucleotides, known as staple strands, that guide long circular single-stranded DNA to the desired shape. One of the main advantages of using DNA origami over the previously mentioned techniques is that it offers a high yield of the target structure, approximate 80%, due to the use of a single link scaffold strand for folding. Finally, production costs are reduced because reagents are widely commercially available. Next, I'll pass it on to Evie to talk more about the limitations of nanomachines in drug delivery. There are a few significant limitations that are stopping the widespread use of nanomachines in drug delivery. Standardized protocols are not available for nanomachines, which will delay the transition from in vitro to in vivo application. This transition is looking very promising on research, but the challenge lies in the technology being used on a larger scale. Nanomachines will require regulatory approval before being used in clinical trials or reach the drug delivery market. The current production costs are still a challenge and will delay the widespread production of nanomachines. Currently, there are no models that can predict nanoparticle behavior in humans. A big constraint in nanoparticle formulation is getting approval by the FDA, which may be difficult without a proper model. Pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies prefer using drugs that are approved by the FDA, and nanomachines pose difficulties due to lack of regulation. Currently, the safety, toxicity, and compatibility tests for nanomachines are performed based on the regulations for conventional drugs, but it doesn't give a good idea of how nanomachines would actually react inside the human body. New protocols must be developed for nanomachines specifically to address the safety concerns. Biocompatibility and toxicity is an issue since the large surface to volume ratio of nanoparticles could become toxic in humans. The compatibility and toxicity of nanomachines in human body could cause disorders like inflammation, immunoreaction, or cancer. More research needs to be conducted in this area to investigate the potential side effects of nanoparticle synthesis in the human body. The limited functionality of nanomachines create an obstacle in the widespread use of nanomachines. DNA nanomachines cannot operate cyclically due to irreversible switching. Most DNA nanomachines lack variable input and output signals, which restricts their diverse applications. It is difficult to ensure the intact structure of the DNA nanomachines since most of them consist of several DNA strands. A big challenge for DNA nanomachines is achieving directional motion. Gaining control over molecular level motion is necessary to produce a functional property change in the nanomachine and to perform a physical task. Next, I'll pass it on to Anita to discuss next steps. The first step towards developing better DNA nanomachines is to move to the clinical trial stage. To do this, the corresponding regulatory approval should be obtained. DNA nanotechnology is aiming to combine the optical, electrical, and mechanical properties of traditional nanomaterials with the biocompatibility that DNA offers. This will represent a huge step towards creating more specialized and controllable machines for drug delivery. Additionally, the creation of robot-like structures that can execute a wide range of tasks is desired as well. Thank you for listening to our presentation.